everyone, so maximizing Visual Studio Code with DDEV. Uh, my name is Mike Anello. Uh, I'll tell you about myself in a second. But this is all about uh, having your tools work for you. So if you're a model developer or a theme developer, um, you know, you can use, you know, BB Edit or Pico or Nano or God forbid Vim or VI to do all this stuff. But I think if you can really you know, level up your tools and integrate things like coding standards and, and, and unit testing and uh, you know, PHP stand and things like that, you can really gain some momentum and efficiency in, in your coding. So that's what this is all about. So this is me. I've been around uh, for a while, uh, DrupalEasy.com. Um, I always like to ask ChatGPT about me for my bio, so I did this a little while ago. And because ChatGPT is very good to me. So I'll just, I'll pop this up there and you all can read what, uh, there's the prompt I use. So I would be embarrassed to write this about myself, but I'll let ChatGPT write this about me anytime. Yeah, I know, it is pretty nice. Sure, yeah. a lot of hallucinations. Like, well, <laughs> could be. I actually have ChatGPT Chat write even more glowing bios about me. This one's okay. You know, but there you go, that's who I am. So according to Jap, Jap, Chat GPT, I can be, you know, who knows if that's actual, actually accurate. Um, so real quick, what I'm gonna to present today is a small slice from a longer course that I teach called Professional Model Development. This is the advertising part, but you can ignore this if you want. Um, but twice a year, I teach a 15 week course uh, over Zoom, two half days a week, I'm in the middle of the semester right now. Um, but it's all about Professional Model Development. And that's what it's called, professional module development. Um, we actually start off the course setting up our tools. So this presentation comes from that. Uh, in the course, we actually cover DDEV, Lando, PHP Storm, and VS Code. So whatever, you know, if you're somewhere in that matrix, then we got you covered. And then we cover all this stuff as well. So you can ask me later, go to the website if you have questions about that. So what are we gonna do today? We are going to integrate VS Code um, with all these tools. So um, some of the kind of the more useful ones I think are um, the PHP Sniffer and Beautifier, which is going to allow us to have coding, Drupal coding standards right in the IDE without you know, running in the via the command line. Same thing for PHP STEM. Um, we'll talk about uh, maybe using Xdebug a little bit depending on time. Um, and then we can set up uh, unit testing right through the IDE. So we can run PHP unit tests without doing the command line as well. Um, but it's all a matter of just getting everything set up uh, correctly. So what we're gonna do is we're actually, I'm gonna give you a list of recommended extensions that you should use for VS Code. I'm gonna give you the configuration that you should use for VS Code, and then I'm gonna demo how all this stuff looks when you have it all working together. Um, so. Not that you're going to have time to follow along, because I, I can talk pretty fast, but we're being recorded, so we can look at so I'm using that site again. Um, you're going to need a little bit of comfort using the command line, but I think if you're a professional module developer or a professional Drupal developer these days, you kind of need to be comfortable with Git and Composer and things like that. Um, a basic understanding of Drupal coding standards. <laughs> you know, just what is a coding standard? <laughs> You know, knowing that Drupal coding standards are you know, two spaces for indents and not 17 spaces for an indent. Um, and then some knowledge of using Xdebug and what it does is, is useful as well. And feel free to interrupt me um, and ask questions at any time. That does not throw me one bit. I actually prefer when people ask questions. All right, so first of all, this is a starting point, what I'm going to show you today. This is not like the BL and end all. There are more, there's a ton of visual coding uh, studio extensions out there that you might like that I'm not going to mention. Consider this a baseline. This is a really rock solid, best practice focused baseline. Um, and you might want to tweak it a little bit for you know, your own personal preferences. That's going to happen again. Um, and this stuff is always evolving. You know, there's new extensions, there's you know, new coding standards, this stuff is always evolving, so it is a bit of a, of a moving target. All right, so this is a list of the Visual Studio Code extensions that you're gonna see in a few minutes when I start the demo. 
Um, and really, the key to unlocking all of this are the first two up there, Remote Explorer and Dev Containers. Um, and what this allows us to do is connect Visual Studio Code directly to the DDEV web container, or if you're using Lando, the Lando app container. Um, and this is really the step that unlocks full integration between the development environment and Visual Studio Code. Um, we're going to be using PHP Debug, that's what um, allows us to use Xdebug, PHP Doc Blocker. Um, you know, if you're going to follow coding standards, you've got to write little documentation blocks and document your code properly. Doc Blocker extension helps you kind of scaffold those and, and um, kind of uh, picks up your, uh, your velocity when writing those. Um, that's right, my son, he has this uncanny ability to call me. Either when I'm teaching, like he and one of my students. But you know, how does he know? Like I'm presenting. I've taken classes like at Amazon and Yeah, it was crazy. Um, uh, PHP IntelliFence. So there's a couple of extensions for VS Code that are similar. There's one called IntelliSense with an S. I much prefer this one. Um, this is what kind of brings PHP store level uh, PHP introspection to Visual Studio Code. Um, outstanding um, uh, extension. Um, Sniffer and Beautifier, that's what allows us to integrate with PHP CS for coding standards. Uh, PHP STAM, obviously, it allows us to integrate with PHP STAM for PHP static analysis of our code. We'll see a demo of both of those. PHP Unit Test Explorer allows us to run tests directly from Visual Studio Code without typing PHP Unit and then the path or the, or the namespace. And then Drupal Smart Snippets, which I feel is like needs a little advertisement of like this is a Visual Studio Code exclusive, you know, like a car dealership or something. Because there are features of this that you can't find in a plugin for PHP Store. Um, and my favorite feature of Drupal Smart Snippets is the fact that when you are doing anything with the form API, if you're running a custom form in a module and you need to put you know, some you know, uh, an image button widget. Um, like, do you know off the top of your head, like, what's the type key for an image button? Like, what are the various attributes you need to implement for an image button? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, and finding that information on api.drupal.org or Drupal documentation is a bit frustrating. Drupal Smart Snippets integrates all that stuff, so you can just do app form, and it will show you a list of all available um, the, the form API elements. You select one, it would scaffold them right there for you. So it does that for render array elements, uh, uh, form API elements, it does uh, hook completion, auto complete, stuff like that. So it's really, it's an outstanding extension for Visual Studio Code. Um, I will say there's also an excellent DDEV manager extension that's available. The way I'm going to show you to hook up VS Code directly to that DDEV web container makes it so you don't really need a DDEV. Um, do you have a manager extension? Although it's a really good extension. So if you don't like what you see here, you just want to use Visual Studio Code, you know, the, the kind of usual way, then use that extension. So going back to the top, the remote explorer and dev containers. So the whole idea behind this is, is that you'll have Visual Studio Code that's running in your host operating system, whether it's Windows, Linux, or Mac. Um, and normally, you open a folder in Visual Studio Code, and you're navigating through your host operating system. In my case, a Mac. You're, you're navigating through the, uh, the Mac file system to find your site's directory and then your project directory and you open that. And Visual Studio Code is looking at files on Mac OS, on Windows, on Linux. What these two extensions allow for is for Visual Studio Code not to be looking at your host operating system file system, but directly <coughs> jacking in to that DDEV web container. So it kind of bypasses the host operating system, and now it's looking, it's kind of transported directly in to that DDEV web container. So suddenly VS Code is relative, everything VS Code does is relative to that web container file system and not the Mac OS file system. And I liken this to, well, I talked ahead of my, um, my slides, I'm going to come, come back. But I liken this to like the Matrix, right? So like when Keanu, when Neo, I'm sorry, 
in the character. When Neo jacks into the Matrix, so that he, he knows everything that is in the Matrix and he can see the Matrix. That's what Visual Studio Code is doing, except when it jacks in, suddenly it knows how to run PHP CS and PHP Stand and PHP Unit because it's kind of jacked in directly to that web container. All right, so I don't have anything running right yet. I've got the site set up. I'm going to kind of show you like, how these things are set up. I do have everything set up. I don't have enough time to like, do it in real time in 45 minutes. But like I said, I will give you, and I'll show you all the configuration that I have. Um, so I'm going to literally just start with you know, DDEV start. And because we are, we're going to have Visual Studio Code connect directly to the web container, I can't open Visual Studio Code and start the project because I want it to jack directly into the container. If the container's not running yet, so it's a little chicken in the egg. So you've got to start it. You know, I, I normally just start it like this from terminal. And then I'll come over here to Visual Studio Code. I'll open this. Let me get this full screen. Make this all a little bigger. And then this is the Remote Explorer extension. And you can see, you can connect to remote, can, um, I'm sorry, remote um, servers, either via SSH, or if you have the dev containers extension installed, you can access Docker containers. And this is showing us what are my available Docker containers. And obviously the ones with the little play, con, uh, play icon are ones that are currently running. PHP Storm, I don't know what these actually do, but PHP Storm has some Docker stuff going on. But this will allow us to connect directly to you can see it, the FLDC 2024 web container, as opposed to the, the DB container down there. So what I want you to pay attention to when I do this, like from here, I can open, if I go to sites, I'm in Mac OS, obviously. If I open this, these files are, you know, VS Code is looking at these files in Mac OS. And like, this is the name of the directory that's open. But when I connect directly to the web container, notice that this is now HTML. That's a directory name, as if I was ddev at, oops, SSH in, right? Because I'm in an HTML directory. So now, Visual Studio Code is like jacked into the matrix. It's looking directly at the DDEV web container. There's no way for me to navigate from, from where I am to some, some other project in, in, um, in my Mac OS file system. This Visual Studio Code is just looking at my web container. So far, so good? I know I can talk fast, so. Question, yeah? Um, so if, if you're loading a project this way, then there is no host container file syncing, right? No. Oh, well, no. There is, that, the file syncing is still happening. So do you need mutagen to enable the... No, you don't need any of that. I mean, that file syncing is happening no matter what. You can turn it off. Right. Um, but with DDEV, um, if you turn it off and then you destroy the containers, um, then you lose your, your files. Right, well, if you're working with yeah, the container file. as your like, master copy, that's yeah. your own concern with that. Right. All right, so we've done this. All right, so any extensions that you've installed in Visual Studio Code, so we'll go to extensions, some of them, you know, will need to be also kind of not reinstalled, but added to the container. And I just, I used this yesterday, so none of mine require it, but it kind of looks like this. When you open up a new project, um, using this method, you know, assuming you've already got all those extensions I mentioned installed, you might get a message like this. Basically, it says install in container ddev slash whatever. And that basically means that the extension needs to have a little bit of knowledge about the container and install itself in some hidden directory inside of, um, inside of your, your, um, your ddev web container. It's not a big deal. You just click the button. It's very much similar to what I'm about to do here. Um, PHP doc blocker always, every time you restart, always requires a little reload. 
And now you can see all of the things installed in the container. I don't know why that is not highlighted, but we'll see as it works, as it goes. So just real quick, just to show you the extensions one more time again. So there's dev containers, Drupal Smart Snippets. I have the Copilot stuff disabled for today. Uh, PHP Debug for Xdebug, Doc Blocker, IntelliFence, Sniffer and Beautifier, PHP Stan, Unit Test Explorer, um, Remote Explorer, and a couple others that I use as well that aren't really important for today. <clears throat> all right, so we are inside of the container now. We have all of our extensions. So now it's time to start configuring things. Oops. So in configuring things, it's important to know, and you may or not be aware of this, with Visual Studio Code and PHP Storm as well, there's kind of two levels of user settings. There's the global level, which is the user level, user settings. Anything in the user settings is valid for any project you open in Visual Studio Code. But then there's also a workspace settings that you can set, and those are settings that are specific to your project. So you don't have to do it the way I do it. I think this is a pretty good way. It works for a lot of folks. It works for me really well. But what I generally do is I have most of my settings and user settings, and those are kind of my default fallback settings. But I have a very small set of settings in the workspace settings that have to do with you know, paths to tools like PHP or PHP SAM, PHP CS. So I'll show you all these settings in a second. Um, actually, right now, they are available. Let me close this so we have the maximum amount of room. Via the command palette, which if you don't use this in Visual Studio Code, this is your new best friend. Because this allows you to basically get to anything in Visual Studio Code, any of the commands. Um, I always just use the shortcut, Command Shift P, and if you just do settings, um, and my, you know, the two that we're looking for, um, in my case, are floating to the top because I use them all the time. You can see they're in that recently used section, but that allows you to get to your user settings and your workspace settings. But the key here, and this is kind of something that VS Code does um, a lot easier than the PHP Storm. The key is all of those settings are stored in JSON. So I'm going to give you files with my JSON, so you can just copy and paste that configuration into yours if you want, or you can merge what I have with yours. But it makes it real easy to make sure we get all these things. So if we go to user settings, and again, I'm not going to go through all this stuff uh, line by line, um, but I'll just kind of go block by block. This, the, the first 15 lines or so are just kind of basic settings for to kind of match Drupal coding standards. Um, after that, you know, file associations, we're, pay, we're telling VS Code to you know, treat theme, dot theme files as PHP files. Um, we have a bunch of exclusions, and this is things to tell um, VS Code, don't worry about files in these directories, you don't have to index them, the extensions don't have to index them or utilize them in any way, it just kind of reduces the workload that VS Code has to do in the background. Um, another block here of just kind of basic um, editor settings. And then we've got some settings here, um, you know, per extension. And I kind of have them documented that way. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but it's all kind of just good Drupal best practice type of stuff. And notice that some of these are grayed out. Like this one is grayed out. What's, the reason that's grayed out is because that's one that I have overridden in the workspace settings. So the value that's here in my user settings is kind of my fallback. So I think what's up there now is my path to my uh, PHP installation of Mac OS X. But when I have VS Code open up to this project or I can look at the DDF container, I want to use the version of PHP that's in the container. So that's what I override in my workspace settings. So there'll be a link to this in the handout. So you can get pretty much this exact thing if you want it. Workspace settings, that's it. That's all of them. Um, and you can see they're, they're basically just paths inside the container to our tools. Our tools and their configuration. So if you're familiar with DDI and the web container, when you DDI SSH in, um, your project by default is in the var dot, 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 HTML directory. And you can see all these paths are you know, inside of that project directory. 
But this is what allows Visual Studio Code and the extensions to run our tools directly inside the container. Because without the Revoke Explorer and the dev container stuff, if we were talking to Mac OS, you know, VS Code was looking at our project in Mac OS 10, these paths would make no sense to VS Code. Because these paths do not exist in the host operating system. These paths only exist inside the container. So between the remote dev container, I'm sorry, the remote extensions, uh, the remote explorer extension, and these settings, this is kind of the key to allowing all of our extensions just to work. And again, this is available um, as a GitLab snippet, as we'll see in a few minutes. Oh uh, yeah, so user settings, again, you don't really need to do this because I'll have a link at the end for all of them. There's, I'll give you the workspace settings. And now we can do a demo because it's kind of all set up and we're doing great on time. Uh, but we're going to take advantage of the problems tab in, in uh, VS Code. There's a similar problems tab in PHP Storm where you can set all this stuff up kind of the same way and see your, in this case, this is a, that's coming from PHP CS. That's coming from PHP Stan. I'm pretty sure the recording is not going to get my finger pointing at the screen there, but. All right, so let's go close some of this stuff. Let's open up a, I think the only thing I have in here is admin tool, but oh, serial module. I always forget about that one. Um, so we'll open up field formatter. We'll close that and open up my problems tab. And boom, right out of the box, we can see a PHP stand issue. So what's nice about this is if you don't have this set up, you know, most people are probably used to, from the terminal, running PHP stand, A-N-A-L-Y-Z-E, level four, and then web, modules, contrib, serial, SRC, plugin, field, field, formatter, go. Right? And you have to type all that stuff to basically get the same thing. But the way we have it configured, you know, not only are you getting the problems in PHP Storm and PHP uh, CS are kind of configured to kind of constantly pull in the background and, and run these things, not only do you get it in the problems tab, but you get, I don't know, if you're anything like me, these do not, I do not stand for red squigglies in my code. So any little, you know, let's say we accidentally have all that stuff. It'll take a second for it to run. Make it save. Maybe it's going to make a liar out of me since we're in a. Of course, it's making a liar out of me now. It should be giving me coding standards issue. Maybe I'm just not being patient. Or maybe something's wrong. That could be it. Let's see. Do we have sniffer? Sniffer and beautifier is there. Let me close the file, reopen it. That's my. Hmm. Well, I don't know why it's not coming up. Yeah, I'll give it a second. Maybe I just have to be a little bit more patient. Um, but the idea is that now we have these tools integrated, and they, they're just going to—they're just going to nudge us all the time. And honestly, that's going to train us. It's going to train us to be. You know, better PHP developers and not constantly make the same mistakes over and over again and you know, kind of try and beat the system and get those things fixed as we're writing code rather than have to circle back. Well, that's really bugging me why it's not. Oh, so it, it found this one right away. The only thing I could think that it's not finding this one because it's inside of another error? That doesn't make any sense, though. How much if I do that? Well, all right, well, that's a weird thing that um, is happening, but. It's probably just because it's all a single statement in return. Say that again? It's probably just because it's all a single statement in return. You can't. Yeah, that's true. It is all one. Yeah, it could be. Well, anyway. All right, let's move on. Um, but that alone. 
Like, well, I could stop now. That, this alone is a huge time saver. If you don't use PHP, here's my little app for PHP Stand, which I freaking love PHP Stand. It will make you a better PHP developer. The great thing about PHP Stand is it works on levels. You saw it there when I, when I did it on the command line. There's 10 levels, number zero through nine. And you can run a scan at any level you want. So if you're new to PHP Stand, start at level zero or level one, and it will show you big stuff. You know, stuff that's really wrong, right? Or really bad. But then as you can train yourself to you know, fix all those you know, errors or not commit those errors in the first place, then you can start bumping your levels up. Um, I currently run all my custom modules at level six, and I can almost always get a clean sheet at level six. Um, and then you can feel good about your code if you're at level one, because that's where Drupal Core is at. And it will be a Herculean effort to get Drupal Core to level two, because there are literally thousands of like little small things that have to you know, change. A lot of it has to do with um, type specificity in the code. And doc, uh, doc blocks as well for Drupal core. All right, how are we doing? Any questions? How many people are, are already sold, already gonna use this? That's everybody, it's okay. I know, you, can, you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> um, I have a quick question. Yeah. The way that I have, like, uh, I think PHP stand set up with, with VS Code is my problems tab has just like hundreds of things in it. Because it, yeah. Because yep. th this is really cool. Like, I use the red squigglies and everything, right? But, like, to see everything, like, to see the problems in a concise way would be. Oh, so just, okay. So you can do this. You can actually, so this, I keep mine like this. So this basically is telling PHP stand I only care about stuff inside that um, So it's ignoring what's in Drupal core. Mm -hmm. um, on a larger project where I've got you know, more custom modules, I might even do slash custom. Is, is there any way to get it to, to do like, if the, the file I'm in, and sort of bubble that to the top of that problems tab. Because like, you know, if the code base is older and you've yeah. got a lot of problems, you yeah. just can't get to them all. I that I don't know. I've never okay. tried to like reorder by priority. <laughs> right, yeah. right. That's interesting though. Because yeah. the problems tab is effectively useless. If there's too much. If they, right, right. Yeah. No, I hear it. Yeah, I hear it. So I am also I'm also one of those people um, who I I don't like a lot of tabs open anywhere, anytime. So when I'm coding, I generally try and keep the, my open tabs to an absolute minimum. And if you're, once you get used to the tool, that's easy. And so I'll show you a couple, while we're in here, I'll show you a couple of the extensions that we're using and why, why I use them. So the IntelliFence plugin, one of the things it does, and this is something people who use PHP Storm take for granted. But I can come over here, right click, go to definition, and boom, I'm in formatter base now. So it's very easy for me to navigate into other classes, you know, if I need to go there. So I generally, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, I'll get what I need, and I'll close the tab. You can also command click on things like that. I'm holding the command key down. Um, so let me mention the, let's see, view, where am I? I'm in my formatter. Let's, let me go to my widget. So here's a um, form, well, it's kind of a form, yeah, um, a form, but here is, uh, we can do something like, uh, uh, no, let's do a dollar element test. I want to define some new element, but I'm not sure exactly what I want. All right, so this is Drupal Smart Snippets in action. All right, what do I want? Oh, I want a, yeah, I want a password confirm element, boom. This alone is like, that's three minutes of my day, which I just saved, right? at least three minutes of like knowing, okay, this is the machine name, this alone I would have tried. Honestly, if, I, if you asked me to do this site unseen, I'd go, is it password underscore confirm? Or is it dash? Or maybe it's all, like, I don't know, oh, heck, this, you don't even have to think about it. <coughs> um, so that's, that's uh, render elements. You can also do form elements. You can also do render elements. And then the other thing this does, which you really shouldn't do in a class like this, but you can 
get access to all of Drupal service um, classes. And it will inject them impro improperly into a class, but this, this is the proper way to do it in a module. But, so that's all Drupal smart snippets, and that's very, very cool stuff, and will save you time once you get comfortable using it. <clears throat> all right, where are we? A few more. Oh, look at that, okay, we just talked about that. I talked about this already, yeah, so PHP IntelliFence does a lot more um, code completion, um, function signature help, meaning, let's see, if we do, public function, form element, oh, I don't want to do that, form element, and then just hover over it and it's going to tell you, you know, what are the parameters that you need, all in line, and this is IntelliFence just kind of helping us out. So a lot of times these tools, what, they are, what they're doing for us is just, they're keeping us in the editor. Right, they're keeping us, you know, in here without having to go to, you know, look somewhere else for documentation. Um, and I'll show you one more. If we go to serial module, and you want to implement a hook, you do function, oops, serial, and you got to go past all these. Um, actually, no, did I do that wrong? I always get it confused between, uh, there we go. Um, the PHP Storm and VS Code, I teach both, so I always forget what the little snippet is. But this will get you to all the hooks. And say so we want to implement this hook. And I shouldn't have done the word function. Should have just started off with hook. But then, you know, it gives you the little dot block. And it gives you the whole signature, and you're, you're ready to write your hook. So we got all that without going to api.drupal.org. Do that all the time. All right, so PHP debug. So, how many people use Xdebug in Visual Studio Code right now? A few. This is if you do like module or theme development. This will again, this will change your world once you start getting used to it. Um, so, in Visual Studio Code, basically you need to set up what's called a launch.json file. And let me delete this one right here so I can show it to you fresh. Uh, delete permanently, delete. So the way this works is, uh, the way um, xdebug works is you've got to tell the server to send out debugging information. And we can do that with, we can do that with ddev by running enable xdebug inside the container. And now, X de now ddev will send out debug information. Then on the other side, we have to tell VS Code to listen for that information. And this is that PHP debug extension, this little icon right here. And the first time you've got to create a launch.json file. And it will actually create this monstrosity for you. Um, but we don't actually need any of that. This is one of the snippets. And all this is really doing, this is basically telling VS Code, where to listen. This is telling VS Code, where's the debugging information coming from that I need to pay attention to. Uh, and the nice thing about this, the nice thing about this setup, about connecting VS Code directly to the web container, is there's no path map. Because both VS Code and the web server are looking at the same file system. So there's no path map, which is often a source of you know, confusion for X debug. But we set this up, and I, the first time I, um, I set stuff up, I always, good practice, I just go right to Drupal's index.php. It's kind of a good litmus test to make sure we can actually debug. Um, and you will see when you're X debugging, PHP stan doesn't like that. But we tell PHP stan too bad. Um, so I'll come over here, and now I'll hit the play button to basically tell. Visual Studio Code to listen because here comes some debugging information. You'll see my bar down here will turn red saying we're listening. And you only want this stuff enabled while you're actually using Xdebug because it slows everything down. So 
I didn't even open up uh, FLDC DC train. So boom, and now we're debugging, right? So I'm loading the home page. You can see it's paused right there. I'm trying to load the site. Um, and this is little, this means that the code has paused at this point and any variables, any information about the code that's in scope to this point, we have available. So like here's a kernel variable, which is an object of type Drupal kernel. And here's all of the properties and we can go, this is a pretty deep rabbit hole, I'm sure. Um, and we can go line by line through this. And when we're done, we just say, okay, web server, continue on your merry way, and the page will finish, finish loading. But as long as you kind of, and, and then when you're done, obviously, we want to, we got we to shut it all down. Otherwise, it just slows us down. But the key with all this stuff is just, you know, how do we, how do we configure it? And so that's why I'm giving you all of these these configuration files. So you can just copy and paste them if you haven't done stuff like this before. We're almost done. Let's see. Um, Unit Test Explorer. The, the nice thing about this, there's no configuration for this. Um, you go to the little uh, beaker, I think it's called. Or isn't that like a Berlin Meyer? Something? The, my class yesterday looked at me funny. Isn't this a Berlin Meyer flask? Is that right? Er, Erl Meyer. Erl 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 oh, no B? I don't think so. Okay. That, yeah, I, believe me, you're, I'm probably wrong on this, so Erlenmeyer flask. Right, I'm glad I got confirmation that it wasn't crazy. Um, and I kind of set this one up before because it does take a minute. Like, if I don't um, put something in the search bar, it will show me all tests in my code base that it can find. So this way, I'm just I'm narrowing it down to admin toolbar tests, and... Uh, these are all functional tests. And App and Toolbar had a failing test yesterday. I was surprised. Let's try this one. Um, and again, this does take, it requires that you have a PHP unit.xml file set up, which is kind of outside the scope for today. But, you know, then we can see our test, you know, our test ran successfully. You can see there's a little check mark there as well. But this is, again, this is a lot easier than coming here and doing PHP unit and then web modules contrib admin toolbar and just, you know, navigating all the way down to the test you want to run. It's just easier and visual and, and all that good stuff. Um, this is a pet peeve of mine. It's almost outside the scope of this, but I can't not mention this. If you don't use the settings.local.php, uh, shame, shame on all of you. Um, if you're a developer and, local, and developing locally, you should absolutely always use one of these. It turns off certain caches. It forces all errors to the screen. Without this, I feel like you're a developer with like one arm tied on your back. So if you don't use this, then you should just read this side and, and do what I say. Um, other extensions, I use the Twig Language 2 extension. For, uh, I, I don't do a ton of front-end development. But this does give you stuff like syntax color highlighting and twig files, which is nice, makes it easier to read. I'm a big to-do person. I like lists. I like to-do lists. Um, this extension will look for um, code comments with app to-do. And then in VS Code and PHP Storm, there's actually a little tab that will show you everything that's marked with app to-do, which is kind of cool. Um, there is a Drupal.org documentation page on configuring Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's good. Not great. Um, I've, I've put some of these updates in there, but I feel some of my suggestions are more opinion based, and so I kind of I, I temper myself in doing that. Um, but there is good information on there. Um, like empty indent, I, I actually don't believe I, I should really delete that one off this page because I don't think that's actually necessary anymore. Um, there's a composure extension. I, I, Every time I give the presentation, I see that bullet point, and then by like 11:30 this morning, I will forget about um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will forget about trying that out. So I hear it's pretty good. I, you know, I think it allows you to like update uh, dependencies and stuff right from the UI. Anybody else have any Visual Studio Code extensions that they use that I haven't mentioned that are really good? No. See, that actually makes me feel good that I'm not missing something obvious. All right, uh, yeah, blah, 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 the class, and then here are the slides, so I'll leave this one up. Um, any questions?
No. So these are you're all checking. You're actually, not a lot of your class. Sell us on the class. Sell us on the class. Right? <laughs> Man. You. I, even though there's free lunch, I will buy you lunch today. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, uh, it, it's uh, twice a year, two semesters, 15 weeks, two half days a week. Uh, we actually have two weeks off during that, so it's really like 13 weeks long. Um, there's a light version of the course, which just kind of gets to the core of the development part. Um, the full version gets you stuff like this, PHP Storm, Lambda, DDA, VS Code, really rigorous setup of running tests, and understand the coding standards a little bit more. Um, we do, um, like the way I teach, I, I, I only teach best practices. But the way I teach is I, I want you to understand why you care about things. Like when I, when, when we were transitioning from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 and all the symphony stuff, it took me a long time, probably longer than it should have, to understand dependency injection. Because I saw all these articles about, you know, how to correctly um, inject dependencies, but not the why. Like, why do I care? Because there's a workaround. Like that, you know, that, you know, Drupal, colon, colon, service. You can inject dependencies anywhere you want, you know, and that, that's not the right way of doing it. So, I kind of, in this class, every lesson is, is like, why do you care about this? Why do you care about the service container? Why do you care about service classes? So that's kind of how I approach all of it. Um, so we do spend a lot of time on, on, on stuff like that. Um, but we also, I kind of picked out, um, you know, what are the aspects of the Drupal API that I see most often in projects with writing custom modules, and that's what we cover. Um, we do, at the end of the class, we have like, two solid weeks of caching. Um, I thought it was going to be like a one, like a, a half day lesson, and then I started writing it, and then I fell into the rabbit hole, and then a month later I crawled up, and I'm like, holy crap, what was that? You know, dizzy, but we do a lot of caching, which turned out to be, you know, our students, like, they love that part of the lesson. Um, uh, what else can I tell you? We do, in addition to the uh, two half days a week, there's office hours every week, um, which he is, you know, he knows about office hours. But every Friday, I just open up a Zoom room, and um, our current students and alumni can come and ask questions as long as they can shoot, shoot horn the word Drupal at that question, we'll entertain it. Um, yeah, I don't know. You can ask me what well, I'm happy to talk about. It. So <laughs> there's also a really nice community aspect. Is like all, not all of the class previous graduates are on the side. Yeah. John, John uh, Cloyds, who's one of the organizers, he's a graduate of our class. There's a, there's a few graduates here. As well. There's a beginner class that I do as well, a 12 week beginner class. That's a new event that I just discovered where DrupalCon is incredibly cheap. Was it 15 bucks? Yeah. You are, it's not just for Drupal Easy. If you are a recent graduate of a, um, a long form Drupal training program, I think I, Ian was asking last night, I think within the last year or two years, you can get a student ticket to DrupalCon for $50. And that's $50 off, just $50, <laughs> which is insane considering how it's 700 bucks to go to DrupalCon. So. so it's a mentoring program. Yeah, we do mentor, we do a lot of stuff. All right, any questions about this? I feel, no, I feel a little guilty about spending time on it. Yeah. Um, maybe a little out of scope, but let's sure. say you're using Pantheon. You sure. need to take on the uh, multi or the online instance. Yeah. You use Ramona Explorer, but you wouldn't use the container. Yeah, I, I, I haven't tried it. I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, I think... Um, well, I, I actually, I don't know if it will work because... And, uh, because I don't know if you can actually SSH into your Pantheon environment. You know, you, you can turn, you can use terminals that are active, but I don't think you can SSH. You can use SFTP, but that's, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Even if you could, I'm sure X debug is not there. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think, I mean, like, if you have your own, if you're like running on DigitalOcean and you have complete control of the remote environment, then yeah, you can make that happen. But I don't think I'm Pantheon or. Aquare platform. Those are really meant to be kind of almost um, uh, read only, uh, other than the file system, and those are you know, locked down pretty hard. Yeah. I can confirm it's not possible with Pentel and possible with Oh. You can ask 
entry level. That's true with Aqua, because Aqua does have a cloud ID, so that's okay. That you, have, you have full SSH access, so. Okay. <coughs> Perfect. Thank you. There you go. So, half, half the good answer. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, oh. I have a question about the local container uh, yeah. setup that you have going on here. Uh, with VS Standard Code. DDEV, but okay. Right, sorry, with, with VS Code specifically, because yeah. like, I'm using DDEV and VS Code every day, but it, do, you, do you find, like, is there any particular advantage to, to like, uh, using VS Code through the container? Other, like, the I tool mean, is, a, is a good thing. But you're, you're asking about more performance? Well, yeah, I mean, because, like, okay. I have, you know, like, my local, uh, my project-specific VS Code settings, I have PHP SAN and PHP CS pointing to, like, the vendor bin, so that the relative path is different, but, like, and so that's all running, like yeah. like you were demonstrating. Yeah. But is there some other advantage that I'm like, because it sounds cool conceptually, but yeah. I, I, is there like some advantage that I'm missing that? No, for, I mean, for what I showed you, the big advantage is the tooling and the exposure of the tooling through VS Code's ID, through, through the, through the UI. Mm -hmm. um, I, there, there is a way with any Docker-based system, if you're looking for more of a performance advantage, um, you know, by default, DDEV is going to sync the host operating system file system, right? So DDEV is syncing, and we got to clear out of here in a minute, but it's syncing this directory with the var www.html directory inside the container. So if I change something here, change the container, and vice versa. Um, it is possible to um, turn that syncing off, which that's a huge part of what Docker does. So that's what slows, like if you're using Docker for Mac or something, that's, that's one thing that can make Docker slow, is that syncing process. Um, but you can turn that syncing off, uh, provided that you, um, you mount your file system inside the container in a Docker volume that is persistent. So when you destroy the containers, they don't go away. And I, I actually know Drupal developers, and they work that way. And I mean, it's a huge performance increase. Um, I want to start before I answer your question. So just real quick, you know, I've got a decent Mac. It's an M1. And it's not the newest, um, but I do use um, DDEV with Rancher Desktop. I don't know if it says Rancher Desktop anywhere there. Oh, there it is. I do use Rancher Desktop instead of des uh, uh, Docker for Mac or Kalima. Um, and I do have new, new gems enabled by default with DDEV. So on this machine, M1 uh, with Rancher Desktop with Mutagen enabled by default. It, it's it's more than half enough. Right. Uh, I was just going to add to a yeah. point. Uh, I think because uh, it, and we've had this problem before. So if you're using contain the all everything in the container, you might have different versions of PHP yeah. than if you have on the host. So yeah, if you're reliant on that, then you must use everything from the container, not right. for everything to work properly. If you could have a completely different PHP version or Python, whatever level. One hundred percent. Yep. You. And, and that's one of the, it's a big advantage of this, which I, I didn't mention, is you're using the version of PHP that's inside the container. And so if you share your DDEV settings with other folks, it, it stuff's going. All right, I gotta go. Thank you, everyone. I'm around to take any more questions.